Hi everyone and welcome to the webinar today. We're going to be going over uh, some data services with uh, Change Data Capture for the SQL Server. Uh, our presenter today will be Steve Hipple. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the right-hand panel under the questions options and just type in your question there. Uh, we'll be taking some questions at the end if anyone has any. Um, if you have any problems at all, please use that uh, chat option or question option and uh, we'll try to fix your problem. Uh, today. Uh, with our next webinar, uh, actually next week we'll be talking to TDWI. Uh, that'll be up on our website right after this webinar. And uh, at the end of month, we're going to be doing a, another webinar about dashboards. Uh, so look out for that invite. With that being said, let me turn it over to Steve. Thanks, Trent. Uh, like Trent said, today we're going to be talking about the change data, change data capture process for SQL Server and how we can leverage that to increase some of the performance and increase the um, efficiency of the ETL jobs that are run off of a SQL Server database. Um, so let me just get into the presentation here. So SQL Server change data capture, what is it? Basically, this is a process that you can set up and configure at the database level that will capture information around the activity of the associated tables that you uh, have implemented in your source system. So you can set this up so that anytime there's an insert, an update, or a delete on a specific table, that record will be, or a record will be inserted into another table that will allow you to identify what type of action was associated with that record. And then from the ETL side, you can reference your change table instead of your original source table which can, uh, in some cases, drastically improve the performance of your ETL jobs. So as a part of the TDC process, what happens is, as I mentioned, there is an additional table that's created that captures all of this activity. And it can be set up to mirror the source system exactly, or you can set it up to specify specific columns that you want to, um, that you want to trigger update to your target database with. Uh, also in this change table, there are some system generated columns that really provide some metadata around that record as far as when it was inserted, updated, or deleted. Um, there's a process for the updates that will allow you to look at the record and what the values were before the update. So as a part of the demonstration, we'll kind of show you how all that works. So some of the advantages of the change data capture process, uh, the biggest advantage is the maintenance and the um, efficiency that you're going to gain through your ETL jobs. You know, if you have a prop or a table that is, you know, 90, 100 million records, it's going to be pretty taxing on your database to do a table comparison. If you're scanning through all those records, trying to identify the updates, trying to identify the new records. Uh, that could take some time. So setting up this process really gives you the ability to only focus on the records that you're concerned with, whether they're inserts, updates, or deletes. Um, those will all be flagged so you know exactly what to do with those records. And you can, you can implement your ETL to uh, just do the straight insert, update, or delete. Or you can do some uh, additional manipulation of the data you know, based on the requirements of what you're trying to do. So the, the CDC process pushes this comparison uh, process down to the database level so that you don't have to, excuse me, you don't have to pull all of that into memory on your ETL job and run through the comparison like I was mentioning earlier. Um, and again, it's going to, it could potentially drastically improve the performance uh, of your load times for your ETL process. And it's going to simplify your process because a lot of times when you have you know, large tables that you need to do comparisons on, there's, there's typically some development there to try to identify the best method of doing that, uh, whether it be through creating triggers at the database level or uh, basing your comparisons on a date. You know, all that is really uh, not applicable when you're using the CDC process. So for those of you that join our webinars on a regular basis, this slide may look familiar. Uh, this is really our high-level view of a business intelligence landscape. 
Uh, today we're going to be talking about or demonstrating really the bottom level here of your source databases your, and your ETL process that is set up to provide all of your front end content, whether it be reports, dashboards, uh, whatever the case may be. So you see the big red circle down there, that's what we're talking, that's the area of the BI platform that we're talking about today. So for the CDC process, this is just a very simple, straightforward example of how the uh, process works. Um, very elementary here, but kind of give you an idea of the process of, of how it's set up. So you have your source table at the top. You provide or you set up the configuration at the, at the SQL Server database level based on the table that you want to set up this process for. And then anytime there's an action on any of those records in the table that's been set up, whether it be an insert or update or delete, SQL Server will identify that and load the data into a change table that's going to reflect you know, the action that was performed as well as some metadata around that action. And obviously your source table is going to be updated as well. But in this case, your ETL is going to be sourcing from your change table versus your actual source table, which is going to give you that performance improvement on your ETL process. Okay, so we are going to jump into the uh, demonstration here real quick. And we'll kind of show you how all this works. Okay, so what we've done is we have set up a simple data flow within the Business Objects Data Services tool that's going to reference a source table, uh, run through a couple of query transformations, and then utilize the CDC uh, function that exists within Data Services to load our target table. So just to give you some background on what's happening here, we're going to take a look at our source table. So this is just a, a, a very simple, straightforward example to give you an idea of how this works. What we're looking at here is a, a source table that's just got three records in it. And if you notice the columns, we have the shift ID name, start time, end time, and modify date for our source table. So if we look at the change table that's created as a part of this process, you'll see each of those columns, the shift ID, the name, start time, end time, and modify date. So these are the columns that have been set up to look for comparisons against uh, through the CDC process. There's also additional columns that are added as a part of the configuration to give you an idea of start times and end times, um, what the operation is, whether it's an insert, update, or delete. And you'll see these, this table get populated when we go through our process here. And then I just want to show you as well the target table. Um, right now, we are looking at the same data that exists in our source system. We have the same three records. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our source table, and I'm going to insert a record here. All right, so I insert a record into our source table. And now you'll see we've got uh, four records here. And so the CDC process is continually scanning this table to identify any updates that have been made or any actions that have been performed against this table. So if we go in and look at our change table, now we've got a record that's telling us we have an insert into our source table that we can identify through the ETL process. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is make an update to this record to give you an idea of what this looks like in our change table. <clears throat> so here's our update process. I'm going to run this. And when I go back to our change table, now we've got three records in here. So you'll notice the operation of two, three, and four are basically the codes that tell us what type of action was performed against the table. So the first record there was our insert. The second record being the operation three gives us an idea of what our data looked like before our update process. And the third record flagged as the operation of four actually shows us the updated values in our table. Okay, so now we can go to our ETL job 
and we'll take a look at what's happening here. So our source table, again, is going to be our change table, not our, not our original source table, but our change table that uh, captures all the activity. And what we've done as a part of this process is the first thing we do is pull over all of the records, or excuse me, all of the columns, and we perform a sort on the modified date. So what this, tell, what this allows us to do is make sure we identify what action was performed first. Because if you have an ETL process that may run, for example, uh, at midnight every night, and you have one record that's inserted, updated, and deleted in the same day, you obviously don't want that to show up in your target system. So by sorting our records by the date, it's going to allow us to uh, apply those actions in the appropriate order so that our delete would come last. Um, and so that way our target database, or excuse me, our target table always reflects the most recent information from our source table. So that's what this query transformation is doing. And then we have a process to flag our operations and set a sequence number. So in this case we are just generating a integer value based on our sort and our operation we're defining as a delete, an insert, uh, before or unknown. These are the actual codes that the data services uh, CDC uh, function needs to pull in in order to uh, update the, the source table appropriately. So that this is going to tell us what action to perform against our target database. And then we have our CDC function here, which is really pretty straightforward. It's a, a sequencing column. So this is this is the reason we sorted in by the modified date so that we can uh, get the most recent activity last. And then our row operation column uh, tells us tells the data services function to look at this operation column to determine whether it's an insert, update, or delete. And then from there we load that directly into our target table. So uh, just uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go back real quick and show you our target table again. So we've still only got the three records. Now I'm going to run our process. Uh, I'm going to run our CDC job here that's going to perform the update based on our change table, uh, not our source table. So we can look at the activity. We, uh, we pulled in three records, which we would be expecting. And then if we go back to our database, Looking at our target table here, we should have four records now. So this was pulled in from our change table and loaded into our target table. So then the last piece here is just to show you a delete operation and how that would work in our CDC process. Um, so we're going to go ahead and delete that one record that we just inserted and updated. So I'm going to run this statement. And then if we go back and look at our source table now, this is our original source table. We only have the three records. So that delete should now be reflected in our change table. And there you see it. Uh, the operation of one flags our record as a delete. So now if we run our process again, our ETL job, it should remove this record here from our target table. I'm going to go back to our ETL job, uh, execute this again, you'll see that it, uh, let me get back to our database here. So it, it didn't. So th so basically, what it's going to do is it's going to take that delete record and delete that record from our target table. And that's essentially how the the CDC process works. But the main driver in this whole process is this change table, and you can take this information and basically set up your ETL job to do whatever type of actions you want you want to provide. So if you wanted to. Uh, do straight deletes against your target table, you could you could 
remove those from the table automatically. If you wanted to archive information, you could flag those records as deleted and load these into a separate table. You have a lot of options with, with how you want to handle uh, your data and the actions that are performed against your data. Okay. So um, that's really the, the bulk, bulk of the presentation for the CDC process. Uh, just to give you a little bit of information about WCI Consulting, uh, you'll see our, our mission statement here on the screen is to bring an unrelenting focus of value to our customers through a dedication and excellence, integrity, and the desire to foster long-lasting relationships. Uh, we've been in the BI space for over 14 years now. We have uh, full-time consultants here. We don't have any um, outsourced contractors or any offshore uh, consultants that we work with. Um, we're centrally located here in the Dallas area. So we, we are able to get to basically any part of the country rather quickly. Um, we have been named the SAP Business Partner of the Business Objects Partner of the Year for the 2010 and the 2011 years. Uh, our main focus is around the Business Objects Suite. And that is basically our presentation for today. Uh, does anybody have any questions at this point? Thanks, Steve. If uh, anyone has any questions, please use the right-hand panel on the uh, questions option.